And this shotgun approach to finding the supermassive black hole seems to have paid off. This is the one I was looking for. It has 23 stars orbiting around it. And this is the supermassive black hole that I think I was looking for. Now, um, it doesn't have a specific name here. I mean, it does, but it's just called RCS8409. But in real life, it's the supermassive black hole located near the region of space called... Uh, here it's actually called okay there we go that's it uh sagittarius a and it's actually the constellation sagittarius in our uh in our uh night sky and this is it this is a super massive massive super super black hole <laughs> i'm not even sure how to call it anymore essentially this is the most massive black hole that we have in our galaxy and it is absolutely ridiculously massive i believe its mass is let's look at it and you can hear even the music changed as i approach it so there's actually a theme uh, of a black hole in this game. Anyway, so let's look at the mass. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to select the black hole. I can't seem to click on it. Come on, you can, you can, there we go. Um, it is 2.3, is that million? No, it's not. It's 23 million masses of, um, er, uh, of our sun. So it's actually ridiculously massive. Now, this number actually does change every time you restart the game because it's uh, it's actually um, randomly generated, uh, but it, I believe the actual, um, the actual black hole that we have uh, in our galaxy, uh, at least according to our calculations, it's about 4 million times the, um, the, the mass of sun. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do several things right now. So, we know there's 23 stars orbiting around it. So, first of all, what I would like to know is what it would look like uh, if you were just kind of hanging around this black hole. And you can see there's a quite a very powerful lensing effect here. Uh, if you were just kind of hanging around it, um, what it would look like for, you know, an observer, uh, maybe from, let's just say, um, from the uh, Endurance Space Station. So, what would it look like to be close enough to it, like we're about, I, I think they were about this close to it, and um, at the same time, what would you observe? So as you're orbiting around it, as you're going around it, what would you observe? So first of all, this is the lensing effect you would observe, uh, because they were not close enough to experience the time dilation, but they were actually uh, close enough to to basically see it. And But secondly, this is what, uh, what else you would see. So I'm going to accelerate time and show you some some kind of a uh, or uh, a very special kind of effect that you only see around black holes that have stars orbiting around them. Now, we don't really know how many stars uh, Gargantua had, but it probably had a few, or at least some kind of objects orbiting around it, except for the three planets that uh, were mentioned in the movie. But so anyway, I'm going to accelerate time and you'll see something pretty cool. And what I'm referring to is this. As you... Essentially, as they were orbiting around the star, they also were observing this pretty awesome effect. And essentially, it kind of looks like a bunch of fireflies. And these fireflies are other objects orbiting around the black hole and creating this awesome effect of uh, time dilation plus um, uh, light reflection that essentially looks like you have these uh, tiny bugs flying around the black hole. It probably wasn't this fast, though. It's probably more like... It was probably a little bit slower than this, but um, as they were uh, getting closer and closer to the black hole, especially when they were approaching Miller's planet, this effect magnified and it actually increased in speed. So if you get a little bit closer, ooh, just a little bit closer to the black hole, just a tiny bit closer, you would actually start observing this at a much faster pace. I'm having trouble controlling my spaceship here. There we go. Here the speed would increase and you would see something like this. And this is a pretty awesome effect. So as they were orbiting around this, they would see a tremendous amount of lights, just kind of a mosaic of lights uh, and all kinds of lights flying around them. So it was a pretty, it was probably a pretty mesmerizing effect, something that would either give you a terrible headache or would just, you know, have your, you'd have your jaw drop and just stare at the sky uh, and not being able to do anything else. Now, what I wanted to do is simulate what this would look like on uh, Miller's planet. It has to be about 6 AU away from the black hole. So it was approximately this far. Now, the black hole in the movie is actually more massive. So it's actually, it would take up a lot more space. It would actually be probably half of the screen. Uh, but this is approximately the distance of Miller's planet from Gargantua. So, and... Um, 
the part that we know about Miller's planet, or what we know about Miller's planet, is that it was orbiting a black hole at approximately, um, or I, I mean, one orbit around black hole would take it approximately one hour for observer outside of the time dilation. Um, but we also know that uh, time dilation on Miller's planet meant that one hour was seven years, so it's 61,000 fa 61, times faster than it is on Earth. And what that means is this, you would orbit around this one black hole um, in one-tenth of a second. So what they would see would be something ridiculously crazy. And I'm going to try to emulate this by essentially creating an orbit around this black hole in a very fast fashion. So this might give you a bit of a headache or make you dizzy, but this is basically, so right now I'm going to show you what it would look like if you had an orbit uh, um, or basically orbited this black hole in about, uh, so this is one orbit per two seconds. This is just one orbit per two seconds. So let me show this to you again, one orbit per two seconds. Now imagine 20 times that. So I'm going to actually try to emulate this by essentially accelerating the video and giving you an idea of what this would look like if you lived on Miller's planet and looked up into the sky and saw this black hole and this is what you would see. All right, you're probably feeling very dizzy right now, so I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, but yeah, this makes me wonder if they, that's actually what they felt when they tried to actually uh, look up into the sky or even approach the, um, the Miller's planet in their spaceship, because it would, it would make it ridiculously uneasy just looking into the sky. Now, uh, before we finish this video, I wanted to take a look at a few, few more things here. Specifically, one of them, one of the, one of the buttons here allows you to see the orbits, and this is actually the orbits of various objects around this black hole. And you can see that a lot of them fly around in all kinds of directions. So, unlike our solar system where everything is flat, uh, everything around the black hole flies around in this really, really in ex eccentric and extrinsic and basically um, diverse uh, directions. Um, now, this creates several problems. One of those problems is that none of the planets and none of the um, uh, solar objects, such as the ne neutron star, in this system probably ha were in the same plane. Um, why is this important? Well, if you're going to perform a slingshot maneuver, you need to have something that's in the same plane as the object. So, the neutron star would have to be in the same plane as uh, Miller's planet and Edmund's planet and all the other planets for you to land on, on, on them. Now, if you look here, none of these things are in the same orbit, uh, so in the same plane. They all have their own planes and they all have different orbits, very eccentric orbits for some of them. And this creates another problem for a spaceship that is trying to land on these stars and planets because, or well, not stars, but planets, uh, because this would just make it really difficult to execute any kind of a maneuver and land on anything. And this is probably what it would be like in reality, it's something that is not really mentioned in the movie. Uh, so it's very likely that there were other objects orbiting in other planes, but the only three objects that were in the same plane as the neutron star where you could land were Edmund's planet, uh, Miller's planet, and Man's planet. So that would at least kind of explain why we were only shown those three planets, even though this, that ultra-massive black hole probably had a lot more stuff flying around it, or, or orbiting around it. Let's take a look at some other things. And actually, if you click on the labels, it shows you all the objects flying around. And these are just uh, names that were randomly generated, but it does create this pretty awesome effect. It's kind of like, it literally like looks like fireflies flying around this uh, point in space. Anyway, so what I wanted to do before we finish this video is actually simulate the approach to a black hole or essentially this is when in the at the end of the movie when um the main character and also the the robot character approach the black hole and they start noticing these really cool effects so we're gonna do that as well and to do this i'm going to probably use this rocket thing i'm gonna try it a few times see whatever looks better because if i just do, if i just actually approach it like this it doesn't actually look realistic they were flying in a rocket so they were probably doing this this way and uh, to approach a black hole from uh, from Miller's planet, from about 6 AU, uh, or astronomical units, you would have to basically decrease your periapsis uh, dramatically. So this would require some ridiculously uh, powerful spaceship, but we're going to assume that they kind of managed that, to do that somehow. And then essentially we're going to blast our engines 
and slowly started approaching the black hole. And as I approach it, the time would actually accelerate as well. So I'm going to slowly increase my time and give you an idea of what this would probably look like. Because as he or as they approach the black hole, the time that we should increase even further from 60 whatever thousand to, you know, basically more, more than that. Uh, up to is essentially infinity. So at some point in time for an observer from the outside would uh, would look like it stopped for them. For 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 the main characters, it obviously would not change anything except that everything around them would move a lot faster, and things would increase in speed, and it, they would see things accelerating, and you know everything around them just suddenly goes fast forward speed. And this is what essentially is happening. As you approach this black hole, everything around you becomes super ultra mega fast. And your view changes as well. Your view kind of stretches. Uh, also, actually, this is where your body becomes spaghettified. But let's just ignore that. Let's pretend that this never happened. Because nobody would actually survive this. There's no way they would survive this. But in the movie, they did. So whatever. Let's, let's pretend like it actually happened. So, okay. Acceleration, even more. Things become very, very funky. And this is when things get really interesting. So everything stretches and becomes one long stretchy thingy. And there you go. This is what it will look like until they finally enter the black hole. Um, now I'm going to actually land on it just to show you what the last part would look like. So this is like second millisecond right before. Okay, that is not pretty to look at. That is not cool. Uh, let, me, let me try to change this. This is actually because I think this is a spinning black hole. It's actually spinning really fast as well. Uh, so let's just take off from the surface just a little bit. But this is really like what you see right here. This is the uh, maybe a moment right before they enter the black hole. They would see this really, really, really kind of a super fastly moving blurry uh, galaxy flying around them. Okay, I'm having trouble taking off the black hole. Can I do it? I need to move a little bit faster because of the gravity that's exerting on me. Okay, done. So I'm going to move away from this black hole now because our mission here is done. So this is what it would look like for the main character, main, main characters as they were approach, approaching the black hole. So uh, both time dilation and um, light bending would be quite dramatic and would actually create some really, really uneasy effects. Something that I don't think was really well emulated in the movie, but I'm sure um, it's still the closest that we've seen uh, so far. This is probably the best best emulated black hole uh, simulation that we've seen in any Hollywood movie and I'm definitely impressed with what they've achieved there. And that is it! This is what it looked like for them when they were approaching the black hole and this is essentially what they've experienced both on Miller's planet and when they were trying to perform a slingshot maneuver around the neutron star. Now, th uh, this is the black hole in the center of our galaxy, I, I, although it wouldn't actually look like this, it would probably be something more like this um, because I did kind of increase time dilation here. And essentially, uh, this is what you would see if you were kind of around around this black hole at a distance of approximately one point, oh, sorry, point 0.1, or I'll just say make it point 0.2 light years away from it. Uh, so it's it, this is what you would see if you were orbiting around it, you would see this time dilation, uh, sorry, not time dilation, this uh, light banding effect that you can kind of see in the middle right there. And, uh, but yeah, essentially this is it. This is it for this video. I. I hope I was able to kind of visually represent the effects that we didn't really get to see in the movie, unfortunately, but this game does represent really well. And in the next video, we're going to explore this a little bit further, maybe do some more science behind some other planets, including Edmund's planets, and um, maybe take a look at a few more things both using both Space Engine and Universe Sandbox. All right, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and game you later, alligators. Bye-bye.